spring savings are in full bloom right now at Lowe's, where you'll find great deals on everything you need to get your home in shape for the season. So hurry into your neighborhood store today to save big on all of your spring home improvement needs, like a free Spectracide Weed and Grass Killer AccuShot refill with the purchase of AccuShot Weed and Grass Killer. Make your home happy all season long with great brands at great prices right now at Lowe's. Offer valid 3-9 through 221 on select AccuShot Grass and Weed products while supplies last. Exclusions apply U.S. only. This is the Happy Hour Network. Pay attention, son. This is for your own good. Today's sponsor is Audible.com, who has more than 180,000 audiobooks and spoken word audio products. Get a free audiobook of your choice at www.audibletrial.com slash late night parents. Why Audible? Audible content includes more than 180,000 audio programs from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine and newspaper publishers, and business information providers. That's audibletrials.com slash late night parents. Do I really get all the applause every week? I guess so around this time. You know, this is Ted Hicks, late night parents. Happy to be here. Once again, it's March, the month of March, March 9th, that is, one minute past the hour. Happy to be here. Um, some quick ways to find us. LateNightParents.com is your one-stop shop portal. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter. Just look for Real Ted Hicks. Or you can follow the show, the podcast, the, you know, all of the above. Um at Late Night Parrot, and you can find us on uh, Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Late Night Parents. Happy to be here. want to thank our digital partners that, that, that play our show each and every week, our good friends at UNI are one, Life Improvement Radio, NGSC Sports that powers us on the iHeartRadio app, I-95 Sports Network. FSC Radio, XRP Radio in the UK, uh, Friends Near and Far Arena Sports Network. Um, it's just too many to to think about. We, we got a lot of good people carrying the show. Happy to be here um, once again. I'm not sure where to start. Uh, tonight's show, we call, we're calling tonight's show Legacy. I name these shows a different name each and every week. Uh, it's helpful for me because I kind of base it on how the people, oh my goodness, I just got a text from one of my good friends, Richard Aldez. He says, the doctor runs with Linda is part of Black Girls Run. All right, Wonderful. So we got two great guests tonight. Happy to be here. Um, at five minutes past the hour, we'll have Dr. Michelle Reed, who's going to join us and talk to us about e-prescriptions. And we're going to go through health and wellness tips and all the above, some of the things that are going on in her world. Really excited about that. 30 minutes past the hour, we're going to have Pam Borton, a former Division I Head coach is going to join us to talk about Grace Under Fire, which is her new book that's coming out in May. Um, less than 60 days is going to be out. Some insider secrets in leaving legacies. And that's why I named tonight's show Legacy. What will be the legacy that you leave 
when you're set and gone or when the book is closed and we start talking about specific people, you know, you kind of think about what have you done? How are you going to impact the community? So I think that's a good question that we will put out there really quick. want to let you guys know that um, my conundrum with the boiler is still happening. Well, I mean, all of that's fixed. State Forum came through, ProServe came through. So happy about that. My wife and I were going back and forth for whether or not. I said carpet. She said hardwood floors. Knockdown, drag out discussion. Guess what, folks? She won. Hardwood floors for our office. Um, the work hasn't started to started yet, but in our bedroom and family room, there will be carpet. So happy about that. Just want to keep those of you that even care to even hear about this type of stuff. Um, want to thank our one of our sponsors, um, Verizon FiOS. Um, our FiOS NY friends, um, the, the private Facebook page, and all the great things that you guys are doing. Wanted to shout you guys out. Also, Salon Paz, you guys heard about my back ailments. You heard about what happened during Christmas time. I fell off the ladder in, in my attic. The good people of Salon Paz made sure to send me a, a nice care package. Thankful to you guys. Um, so many people to thank. We should get started because it's five minutes past the hour. It was six minutes past the hour. As I mentioned, tonight's show is called Legacy. Two guests tonight um, at 30 minutes past the hour, Pam Borton is going to join us. And five minutes past the hour, it's actually six minutes, so I'm actually late. We're going to have Dr. Michelle Reed, who's going to be joining us. Um, we're going to be talking about... As I mentioned before, e-prescriptions, and I think I see her in the queue, so I think I will bring her on, but it wouldn't be, I would be remiss if I didn't give her a nice, warm, welcome introduction, um, how I met this person, believe it or not, was through a connection um, of her husband on Facebook, because um, there's a lot of great things happening in on Long Island, in the area of Westbury, if you even want to call it Westbury, I guess so, uh, at um, NXGen Athletics um, Training Center. So I happened to be taking my daughter and son there for basketball lessons, wound up meeting her husband, wound up finally connecting the dots, and I had an awkward uh, I, I guess the first time we met was kind of awkward because I called her by the wrong first name. But without further ado, I want to introduce Dr. Michelle Reed. Dr. Michelle, how are you doing? I am so fine. Thank you very much, Mr. Hicks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just trying to contain my laughter. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tell you this much. There's something because that Facebook application is something because someone just texted me and said, the doctor runs with my wife, Linda, as part of Black Girls Run. I said, wow. That's true. You're talking about technology, so it's the world of social media and everyone being connected. Yes. So, yes. Yes. Just as, just as easy as that. I want to tell you, like I said, I, there couldn't have been more of an awkward introduction between you and I because I said, I think I said, Diane? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That is exactly what you said, and you were very adamant that my name was Diane and I was married to Scott. <laughs> and you were like, and you are? I'm like, uh, it, it doesn't matter. I know who you are. I need to meet with you because you're doing a lot of great things in the community, Dr. Michelle. Happy to have you here. Um, you know, I was supposed to start off this, this segment about the last time I visited the doctor's office which was um, in January, and mm -hmm. I was getting a prescription renewed. And so I was expected to, you know, have a, a paper, physical paper prescription in my hand. I would walk out, go to drive to Walgreens, and then they would tell me, you know, hey, it'll be 30 minutes or 90 minutes. But something new, something different happened, and I was kind of taken back because the, the doctor didn't, he didn't really explain it to me or I didn't understand it. But he said, no, there's no physical 
pres- uh, uh, script that's going to be in your hand. And I said, are you sure, Doc? Are, 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 is, has something changed? What's new? You know, but tell me, you know, tell us, um, not just myself, but the listeners from Late Night Parents, what's happening with e-prescriptions? And even before that, tell us about yourself. Okay. So my name is Dr. Michelle Reed. I am a board-certified family practice physician. So that means I take care of the entire family from birth all the way into geriatrics. My special focus, though, is disease prevention. I am very much a big proponent of that because I realize that so many of these diseases that we have ranging from obesity where there's 75% of Americans that are considered not at a healthy weight to high blood pressure to diabetes to high cholesterol, all of these diseases could be prevented if we started to really focus more on prevention as opposed to the treatment and pushing drugs. So I do prescribe medicine if we do need that to happen, but my major prescription that I love to give my patients is to change your lifestyle and to make a a major change because the further down the line, these are the problems that we don't want to have to happen to you. Now, and that sort of leads into, I guess, with me being a physician, I grew up on Long Island. Um, All of my education has been on Long Island. That's from elementary all the way to medical school. I ventured into Queens to do um, my residency in family medicine. And really there, that's where I saw that we are truly lacking in getting access to care and basically just following through with the care that we need to have. So um, So two years after, yes, two years after residency, I started a practice with a location in Rosedale, Queens, and eventually we ventured out to Garden City, Long Island, as the second location. And um, maybe I think it was like in the mid, I think it was like around 2005, 2006, I was approached by a good friend who was working for an agency, and she was telling me about getting the electronic medical record so we can connect the offices and we didn't have to worry about the paper charts. And um, she was a good person, good character, so I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and follow her lead. And so we were basically one of the first practices in Queens that started with the electronic medical records, and that was back in 2008. And right off the bat, we started sending prescription electronically. And the purpose of doing that is, One, you don't have to worry about prescription error. So if the pharmacist is trying to fill the prescription, they're making (laughs) sure that they actually know the proper name and dosage of the medicine, so they will therefore eliminate an error. But at the same time, you know, taking into consideration if a patient is sick, there's no reason why they have to make two trips to the pharmacy, one to drop off the prescription, and then the second one is to return to pick it up. So um, that's something that we had started right back from the beginning, like I said, in 2008. But as of the end of March, New York State has a law where everyone, as far as all the physicians, have to use electronic prescriptions. And not everyone has the electronic medical records either. So it's a little bit of a push now for people to come on board and to be legitimate. I just want to let our listeners know that we're talking with Dr. Michelle Reed. She's not just, you know, I I would like to say she's the doctor of late night parents, but she's everyone's doctor because I'm telling you, when you're just sharing that story, so you're a trailblazer. You were an early adopter of of, of this, and that's that's excellent. That's excellent because I kind of think about stuff like that when – the per- like you said, a person is ill. They're going to whatever their pharmacist is of choice. They're dropping it off. They're waiting. Either they're waiting and or, and that's if they, you know, they, I guess they'll have to wait if they don't have the transportation. But if they do have the transportation, they're, they're, they're making two trips, which totally seems so backwards. But um, I, I do have a question for you about this, and and I guess you would know best because you've been doing this for, for many many years. So if um one question I received 
if I'm receiving a, a script that has, you know, multiple refills, let's say by, by default, is it like two refills? Um, well, it it depends on what your insurance will cover. So nowadays, okay. most insurance plans want you to have a 90-day supply. So that's a three-month supply of your right. medication. Right. My question is, what should I do or what should a person do? Now, this this is, you know, after March 27th when this has gone live, what should I do if there's a mistake with the quantity? So if if I'm just Ted Hicks out there, the E the E prescription has been sent through to my pharmacist and there's only one prescription on there with without any refills. I'm just taking that as a as an example. What should I do as, you know, the person that needs that medication? Well, I guess first of all you should probably just contact your doctor just to make sure that there was no error in the prescription. So I'll just say, for instance, you normally take your blood pressure medicine twice a day. But instead, when they submitted it, it's not listed as one tablet twice a day. It's listed as once a day. So technically, you've been shorted 30 pills. So I would just contact your provider just to make sure that there was no error in the amount or just let them know, you know, I went to the pharmacy, the pharmacy gave me this, this, and this. I mean, because ma- mistakes do happen on either end, but yes. this is also to help to decrease the frequency of error. And at the same time, the pharmacists now do counseling, and they do go over your prescription with you. And I okay. really feel that as the patient, you are your own advocate. Yes. My job is to teach you because that's what the Latin term doctor means, is to teach. So I am teaching you so you can become your own advocate. So if between the physician or the pharmacy you have the wrong prescription, you need to say, okay, you know what, I think there's been a mistake or an error on someone's behalf, and I take my medicine twice a day, not once a day. Right. And I'm sorry, because here's the flip side to this question. So what happens if I've exhausted my uh, prescription and the refills? Um, will the pharmacy automatically contact the, the, the primary care provi- uh, physician? Or, like, how does that work? Or does the patient have to start the cycle over again for that 90-day period? What normally happens, so if we're talking about someone who's taking medicine because they have high blood pressure, Yes. Technically, they're supposed to be seeing their, their physician throughout the year. So it's okay. not just a once-a-year thing when you show up. Usually it's every three to four months. So okay. when you go for your follow-up appointment to see the provider, at that time you should say, okay, I have one refill left. I need another one. Can you send one to the pharmacy now? Because they can send one electronically. That would just basically sit there. And when you need it, you can just call the pharmacy and say, okay, please go ahead and fill my other prescription for me because it usually doesn't take that long. Or the other thing is if the pharmacy, and it's been a longstanding prescription that you have, the pharmacy will automatically send us an electronic message asking us if we want to refill the prescription for the patient. Oh, okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So it is um, bidirectional in that in that standpoint too. That's perfect. Perfect. Hey, I do have some health and wellness questions. Um I know we're 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 running up against um our, our segment, and I, and I know you're busy, so I, I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. Um, so I read an article that was dated back from 2010 that was in Ebony, and mm-hmm. I noticed there was a specific person that um, – his name is similar to yours – that had some tips on health and wellness and just, you know, doing the right thing. Um, what what would be, let's say, your top three tips that you would give to someone in regards to health and wellness? Okay, so is that the episode, the um, the <laughs> Ebony edition that has President Obama on the inside, think, but Dr. Reed I, on it? Is that I the one? I think it does. I think that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> President Obama's on the cover, and I'm on the inside. <laughs> yes. 
So like I was saying earlier, as being a physician who is very big into disease prevention, one of the best things that you can do to take care of yourself is to get adequate amount of sleep. So seven to eight hours of sleep is the general norm. That's major. That helps for your body to reset, to relax, slows down the metabolism. The next thing that I would recommend is just to move. Any type of exercise. Okay. At least three to four times a week. If you can do 30 to 45 minutes, that's perfect. I have a good friend of mine. She dances every single day. She dances. Not slow dances, but she dances to fast-paced music. 35, 45 minutes. Salsa? The next thing I recommend is don't skip on your meals. Always okay. eat at least three to four meals per day. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to reveal anything else because I have a forthcoming book that I'm working on. So really? So I'm not trying to give all of my <laughs> secrets away yet. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, I, I just really want to quickly for you to focus on so um, what used to be called fundamental sports training is now next generation athletics located on on Merrick Road um, mm-hmm. out here on, on Long Island. Um, yes, they focus on basketball. Yes, they focus on some of the core sports. But I, I heard from a little birdie that there's going to be some adult orientated classes, um, health and wellness classes. Could you, could you give us a, just just a sneak peek on them? Yes. So Next Generation Athletics, formerly known as Fundamental Sports, is going to be starting an adult wellness program. A lot of times we have the parents that drop off the kids or we have the parents that sit there for an hour and a half, two hours watching their children. They're sitting there talking. What we're trying to do is to encourage the parents not just to sit and watch your child, but take advantage of having some downtime where you say you don't have enough time to schedule an appointment with yourself to exercise. Here's the perfect opportunity. You're already at a facility. You know your child is in good hands. You can exercise the same time as your child. So we're going to be offering a whole range of courses. We're going to be doing Zumba um, by Sherry um, Diaz and Jessica, um, Turbo Kick, Belly Dancing, um, a new program by Lancelot Theobald, which will be called Absolute Fusion, where you're working on strengthening your core because everyone knows with whatever sport – that you do, and even with dancing and walking up the stairs, everything stems from you having a strong core, a strong abdominal area. So that's something that we're going to be working on with Lancelot. Coach Terrell is going to be doing a boot camp. Coach Jackie will be doing yoga, not just for adults, but also for children because kids need to understand the flexibility, the importance of having flexibility. A lot of times when I go to the schools and I do physicals, half the time kids can barely touch their shins, let alone touch their toes. <laughs> and these are the ones who are athletes. So this is something that's very important that she is going to be focusing on the athletes who are children and also the adults. So we should be starting within the next week or two at um, Next Generation Athletics. We are going to be also incorporating um, massage therapy. A lot of people think that a massage is just something that's just to relax you. No, there are massages to help to strengthen your your bones, your ligaments, to relax your muscles, to relax your ligaments. So um, everything is just tying together for our wellness program. And we're going to um, also have a little um, time where you can experience the classes and um, to do an introduction so everyone will get to know who the instructors are. And that should be coming, like I said, within the next week or two. And once I know um, the definitive date and time, I can get back mm-hmm. to you. So that way um, we can mention it on the show and all, and perhaps even have some of the team come on and speak with you too. That would be perfect. We're talking with Dr. Michelle Reed. We're talking about health and wellness with the Next Generation um, Athletic Facility. It's located in 575 Merrick Avenue. That's in Westbury, New York, 1155. 
1-800-516-1790. Phone number is 516-7722. Uh, I do have one bonus question for you, and it's on <laughs> – it's a question that it might come a little bit out of that um, left field, Dr. Michelle. It's in regards to depression. Because one thing everyone, not just Americans, but it seems like globally, everyone loves to binge watch TV. Mm-hmm. And there was an article um, posted in Late Night Parents, does binge watching TV lead to depression? And I'm going to read a quick excerpt uh, from the article. It says, Roughly 30, 35% of participants qualify as binge watchers and reported higher levels of stress, anxiety, and depression than non-binge watchers. Binge watching is a growing public health concern that needs to be addressed, um, and that's from various scientists. What, what's, what's your take on that? Well, a couple of things. One goes back to what I was talking about when I was mentioning exercise, the importance of exercising. Because when you exercise, your body releases endorphins to make you feel better. That helps to calm you down, to calm your heart rate, just to give you a chance to de-stress. The other thing is when you're watching TV, more times Uh than not, you're by yourself. And if you're binge watching, you're definitely by yourself. And the concern is isolation. You have no one to talk to. You're not interacting with anyone. So, therefore, we're increasing the likelihood of you having anxiety and depression. So I encourage you to get out and move. (laughs) The weather is getting nice. We're going to have the exercise classes at Next Generation Athletics in Westbury on Merrick Avenue. You can take part in the exercises there. Dr. Michelle, uh, I want to give you a round of applause. Thank you. And I do want to ask you, what are the best ways to find out? I mean, your portfolio is so large. Tell us the best ways to get in contact with you via social media to find out about whether it's your practice, the the good work that you're doing in at <clears throat> Next Generation um, Athletics, all okay. the above. Okay, all righty. So the name of my medical practice is Amazon Mary S is in Sam Family Medicine Healthcare. We're located, like I said earlier, in Rosedale, Queens, and Garden City. Long Island, so you can look us up that way. The phone number for the office is 516-794-2200. If you're interested in having me as a speaker, um, the best way to contact me is through, you can do it through social media, Dr. Michelle with one L, middle initial C, last name Reed, R-E-E-D, um, and my brand page is www.askdrmichelle.com, and that's A S K Dr. Michelle with one L dot com. And thanks to social media, MS Family, and Dr. Reed, and Next Generation, we're all over the place on Twitter, <laughs> Facebook, and yeah. Instagram. Next and of course, are. late night parents too. <laughs> yes, we all are, and it's it's great to. As, as I mentioned to Scott uh, previously, I said it's great because we're all going to work together because there's one goal out here, and uh, I'm just going to read your part of your bio. Committed to using. Oh wait, be, but before oh, you do ahead. that, I have a question for you. Have you decided okay. which exercise class you're going to sign up for? Is it going to be belly dancing? Um, the core workout, or the boot camp, or the Zumba, or the yoga. Uh, I I have another good friend. Um, uh, uh, oh my goodness, the name leaves me. Um, Rosalind Ross, who does mm-hmm. yoga. So I think I'm going to lean towards the Zumba. All right. So I'm going to, to totally go in a totally different direction. But I want to say. Um, what's powerful is the words that you have in your, your Twitter profile, committed to using my talents to uplift the community. And just with those specific words and with you coming on tonight, that's exactly what you've done. So I want to thank you so much for taking the time out tonight. 
Um, you didn't have to do it, but you did, and we're, we're glad you did it. So this segment will be available on various, you know, SoundCloud and everything else that I'll share with you personally so that that will be posted and people will listen to. And hopefully people do come out to NX and people come out to your practice and or just reach out to you on social media. So I want to thank you so much, Dr. Michelle. Thank you very much for inviting me on for Women's History Month. All right. All right. Take care. All right. Have a good night. You too. And that was Dr. Michelle Reed, Women's History Month. We're really excited about it. Um, Last week was our first set of guests. We have, um, we're going to do it this whole month. We're going to do it this whole month on Women's History Month. Um, We'll be right back. We're going to play um, just a real quick promo from our friends at Audible. And then hopefully we'll be back with our next guest. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook of your choice and a free 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash late night parents and choose from over 180,000 audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash late night parents. That's audibletrial.com slash late night parents and get started today. Why Audible? Audible content includes more than 180,000 audio programs from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine and newspaper publishers, and business information providers. That's audibletrials.com slash late night parents. And we're back. This is Ted Hicks, Late Night Parents. Um, we're getting ready to go into segment number two. We're so appreciative of having Dr. Michelle Reed join us at five minutes past the hour. We talked about health and wellness. We talked about e-prescriptions. We talked about just the right things to do to keep yourself healthy. Um, we talked about next generation athletics, um, the facility for where the health and wellness training is going to happen in the next few weeks. Um, really excited. As I mentioned before, this is Women's History Month. And yesterday was International Women's Day. So we have a, a, our next guest is lined up. And as I mentioned, this is a, a fantastic show with I have to pat myself on the back. No, I can't pat myself on the back. I have to pat the PR staff that we work with on the back for um, lining up wonderful guests for us. But um, our next guest is <clears throat> Ms. Pam Borton. And she has, um, I like to say, with over 25 years of coaching Division One basketball, including 12 years in the Big Ten, and Ms. Pam Borton has led her teams to a Final Four, three sweet, sweet, sweet 16s, and numerous NCAA uh, tournament uh, appearances. She's received the Top 10 Global w- Women of Leadership Connector Award, the Real Power 50 Award, the Ann Bancroft Dream Makers Award, and the National Coach of the Year Award by the New England Basketball Hall of Fame, and was recognized as a two-time Naismith National Coach of the Year nominee and honored with the creation of the Pam Borton Endowment at the University of Minnesota in the College of Education and Human Development. I had to take a deep breath. Pam, we're so happy to have you on tonight. It's it's great to be here. Thanks uh, thanks for having me. Oh, please. That that's the the least. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's it's so happy to have you here. I didn't, I mean, I was running out of breath because I was running through some of your accolades. Um, but also, the, one of the reasons you're here tonight is um, within the next 60 days, um, your new book, On Point, A Coach's Plan for Life, Leadership, and Performing with Grace Under Fire, due out in May, is coming out. Um, there's so much to, to get into. I just want to, if you can just briefly Introduce yourself to our listeners. Well, like I said, it's great to be here. Um, I've been in uh, the world of, of college uh, athletics for for 27 years and transitioned out a couple of years ago. And um, now I have my own practice where I'm a, a senior executive coach, consultant, and keynote speaker. And from all of my years in coaching uh, major college athletics and now coaching uh 
CEO level leaders yes. um, and teams in the business world, I have, um, you know, have, in, have incorporated um, that into into my business and and then just really basically sharing uh, my stories and um, lessons learned from big time college athletics um, into business um, in this book. Wonderful, wonderful. I just want to get into a, a couple of quick questions. Um, one of my questions is, um, and, and, and it's a question that we go through every day in, in our professional, professional lives, and it's how to get the best out of your team and the people around you. Because I, I can tell you, Pam, I'm a team leader, and I have a great group. Um, are, is everyone a strong performer? No, but I would say 75% of them are. What do I do for the, the remaining 25%? How do I get the best out of them? Well, I think number one is you have to find out um, what their strengths are. And I've always been a coach where I have focused on the strengths of my players, and now I focus on the strengths of my clients. And that is finding what is good in each and every one of your um, team members and the people on your staff and making sure that, that you have them in the right seats. And so I think number one is making sure that you have hired the right people um, you find their strengths and making sure that they are in the right roles um, on your team. And then I think the biggest thing that uh, a, lot of, a lot of people and team leaders forget is everybody is motivated differently. Find out what motivates each member of your team, and you've got to coach them and manage them and lead them all in different ways. Pam, tell me, I mean, because you, you have, you know, so much, your background it's it's so heavy that tell tell us about how coaching elite athletes compared to coaching CEOs, COOs, CFOs. Well, they're both uh, obviously very uh, um, every a lot of uh, athletes and CEOs are Type A. They're very driven. They're very competitive. Um, they face a lot of pressure, and um, they're very highly driven. Um, they're expected to win and the profit, the bottom line, outcomes and results are very important. Um, so you have uh, people that are very high-level um, competitors, thinkers, um, and, and just the things that, that, that athletes that need to do to, to perform well, which is be, being part of a team um, and being able to uh, perform at a very high level on a consistent basis. That's exactly what business leaders do. Um, they've got to get their teams to perform at a very high level um, under s scrutiny, pressure, stress, and, and they have to um, have successful outcomes. And uh, I think there's a lot of people that are e expecting um, CEOs and business leaders to be success successful and so forth, and people expect the high-level athletes to be the same way. Pam, I have to tell you a little something else about myself that I'm sharing. is So I've been in – information technology and next year makes year number 20. And I'm going to tell you between time, stress and project management, those are the, the triple constraints that I have to deal with on a daily basis, regardless of the situation, whether it's dealing with a technical problem or if it's um, soft skills or in, in any forms of um, communication. And I, I tell you, so it's like, when I when I say how can leaders today manage that stress, pressure, and expectations that they experience on a daily basis, you know what what would you suggest for like myself, someone who's I'd like to say I'm seasoned, but mm -hmm. I don't know I I don't always feel that way on, on every day. Well, I, I think the most the most important thing that we do as leaders and and you're in charge of a lot of different things is. The most important thing that we do as people, and we get to a certain point in our careers, and we realize it's not about us, and it's not about you that's doing all those things. We have to be, we have to surround ourselves with great people, and it's the people that we have around us. That's what becomes so important when we're able to be secure in ourselves as leaders, um, believe in ourselves as leaders, and when we can learn to hire people that are better than we are in certain areas, um, that's how you become extremely successful. It's who you surround yourself with. So you had mentioned that you're that you're focused or you're in charge of like three different big areas, and it's so important for you to have key people and very talented people 
um, in each one of those areas because you can't do it all. So, excellent. Pam, tell, tell us about the, the – this is an area – I mean, this is an environment of change. Things are changing all the time. Let's just say – let's look at a certain component of technology. Technology changes at the step of a finger. But for some of our leaders, what are must-have skills in the environment of change management? Well, it, it, there's a lot of different things for change management, but I and, – and again, it's – You've got to be able to come in as a leader, and you're, if you're taking over a new company or you're presenting a project, you said you're on project management, you have to come in with an inspiring vision and be able to sell what your project is, and this is what this project is going to do. Or you come in and say, this is my vision for this company as a new leader, is you have to come in and you have to be able to, to have a shared vision and sell your vision to your team. And then it's in change management, it's about listening listening to your people, um, evaluating what you have, listening to ideas, and then uh, getting buy-in from your team. You've got to be able to get buy-in from your team. You're not going to be able to pull people across the finish line or push people across the finish line because, you know, this is what we're going to do. You've got to get people to buy into your vision, buy into their roles, and get everybody on the same page heading in the same direction just like you do major college athletic teams. That's how you win at a very high level. That's how you get a team to the final four. That's how you get a team to buy into project management is, is um, being able to uh, uh, get everybody to buy in. Pam, as, as as you, you've made me feel so comfortable. I'm going to share that not only I deal with it and I'm a team leader and I deal with, you know, time, project and, and, and stress management, but I'm also a dad. And my, my, mm-hmm. my 14 year old daughter is playing junior high school basketball. So it's a combination of uh, PAL, CYO, and now she's starting to get involved in the AAU basketball, um, organized sports. And I've watched her progress over the last four or five years. Her game has, has advanced. Her understanding of the game has advanced. But what can parents do to support and encourage their children that are competing in sports in this day and age? Well, you you said two key words in in your question, and that is support your kids and encourage your kids. And I think that that has been lost. Um, There's a lot of parents that are, are really dependent on that, getting that scholarship or, the social media has really affected kids nowadays because they're reading all this stuff about um, each other and, you know, the cyberbullying. Um, you know, parents can be supportive in the stands. You know, you, you see a lot of times that parents are, are fighting with each other in the stands because of, you know, their kids better than, you know, right. somebody else's kid and, and the playing time and so forth. And I think um, don't take the love of the game away from your kids and encourage them and support them to do the best they can and not get all caught up in, you know, the parent drama or the player drama or whatever's going on. But, um, you know, I think the the support and encouragement, period, that's the parent's role in the whole process. And I just want to let everyone know, we're talking with Pam Borton, season division one women's basketball coach, um, leadership um, executive leadership and coaching executive, uh, Pam. I, I, it's Women's History Month. I have to ask you one question: Is what are the critical skills women must have in order to take their skills to the next level? Well, a, a big part of that, and and what I'm hearing a lot in corporate America is their executive presence. Um, women having the confidence and the courage you know, to take that next step, to take that promotion, to go from a senior vice president to um, the CEO. It's having that executive presence when they're able to walk in the, into a room without saying a word and having a presence and learning how to work a room um, like a pro. Have, also having great communication skills and being relevant in their industry, um, being up to date on, you know, the, the, new, the new and improved or what has changed in technology. Um, They've got to be able to talk the industry and speak very intelligently. And the other thing is, is their appearance. And, you know, you've got to, you've got to dress the part. You've got to dress the part in, in business and, 
And if you want to take that next step up the ladder, that's what people are looking for. That's that's uh, the the rough edges that you try to to work to work out when you take that next step to the top. Pam, um, with so many years of coaching, um, t- tell me what are some of the just key lessons of leadership that you've learned as a Division One coach. Oh. We could be on the phone for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've learned uh, I've learned so many lessons. Um, you know, I uh, you know I think there's there's so many. I think just from coaching, I think there's a lot of things that that stand out into my mind. Um, I learned as much from my players as I did from any um, from them. I learned to listen to them. I learned to their ideas and what their concerns were. Um, and I think we all can do a better job at listening to people and listening to feedback and listening to ideas. Um, I think as a leader as well, um, you know, and I'll say this till I'm blue in the face, it's, it's about the people you surround yourself with in this day and age. I don't care what industry you're in. You've got to surround yourself with good people. Um, people that care as much as you do. People that are going to work as hard as you do. People that want to be there um, part of your organization, and also a leader that has a lot of empathy and compassion um, for their people, and uh, you know that's a, a great way to, to to retain people is you know the, the compassion and the empathy that you have have for uh, your people as well. But I think just taking responsibility and and there's a lot of a lot of times leaders are in very high positions and they feel like they're putting fires out all day is just having grace under fire. There's so many times that, that we can find ourselves in adversity and um, taking the blame and, and so forth is always take the high road as a leader, take the blame, take responsibility. And, um, you know, that's, that's why you're in that position. I, I, most of these questions that I've asked you um, tonight are all, you know, the, all these different nuggets are available and on point. A coach's plan, game plan for life, leadership, and performing with grace under fire. I can't wait to read your book. Um, I do do have w- a couple of questions on. There's an event coming up, and I, I believe in the next two weeks, Women on Point, the Executive Leadership Summit. Would could you share that with us? Share some information. I sure can. It's a, uh, it's an executive uh, um, leadership summit for women. So it's women that are in leadership positions or women that have teams in their organization. And we have leader, we do a leadership assessments. We do leaderships. We do um, set leadership sessions on relevant topics like executive presence, how to build high performing teams, uh, purpose and passion, how to uh, strengths based leadership. Um, a lot of high level topics. We do some team building activities. Um, but it's a very – we limit it to about 30 women. It's a very intimate, um, safe environment for women to connect, women to sh- engage, women to share, uh, women to talk about their challenges. Um, but we started – me and my business partner started this uh, a few uh, about a year ago. So we are connecting women from all over the country across industries. And we have, um, you know, three executive coaches, one from corporate America – uh, myself from from college athletics and now coaching in corporate America and another executive coach that's been doing this for about 20 years. So it's a it's a great women's leadership summit for executive level le- uh, leaders and it's in Chicago on March 23rd to the 25th. What are your plans, Pam? I know this is going to be a success. Um, we here at Late Night Parents will definitely promote this and, and put it out there on social media. What are the plans for let's just say the women that can't make it to Chicago, are there any plans to, for it to branch out? We are. Um, that's a great question. October 12th to the 14th, we will be holding another Women on Point Leadership Summit in, uh, in Vail, Colorado. So we're we're moving this around the country. We started in Minneapolis, now we're in Chicago, and we're moving it in the fall to uh, Vail, Colorado. So we want – Women love to travel. Women love to travel with their girlfriends, but also do professional <laughs> development and yes. uh, maybe go to the spa for, you know, you know, a couple hours. But uh, but it's all, you know, encompassing and professional development, connecting 
and then just uh, being able to take women to that next level as leaders. Pam, one of my next to last questions I'm going to have for you is what kind of legacy do you see yourself leaving young women and what might you tell your younger self? Well, the legacy um, and the mark that I will leave, um, you know, with my, my coaching background and now coaching in corporate America is, is, is helping is, is developing people and helping successful people go to the next level. I've always been able to, I've always impacted people's lives. I've always developed people into leaders and so it's developing people to their fullest potential and also teams to their fullest potential um, now in, in corporate America. What I would tell my younger self um, is a lot of things. So I think one thing is, um, is to listen and learn um, I think when we're all younger, we think we know it all and we have all the answers and, you know, I can do it better. And, and when I get my chance, you know, to sit in that chair or be a head coach or be a CEO, I can do it better. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, is to listen and learn and learn from experience, um, as well, but I'll also to stay true to myself is, you know, I think a lot of people try to be somebody that they're not or True. they is be true to yourself and to your values and with integrity, with honesty, um, with teamwork, and with respect. Those are two little nuggets that I would, that really kind of stand out in what I would tell my younger self. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yes, you are, you have just written a wonderful book. Um, my neck, I guess my next to, to last question is, could you tell us what books, what book or books are you currently reading right now? Oh, uh, one of the books that I'm reading right now is, is called finding, um, the space to lead. And I couldn't even tell you, it's, it's not right in front of me who is, who has written it, but finding the space to lead, it's, it's about um, leaders finding the space to be able to think strategically. I think we all get in our worlds and we're so busy. We're going a hundred miles an hour and we're right. doing 16 things at once. And as learning as leaders is to find that space to stop and pause and reflect and slow ourselves down so we can be mindful leaders. Um, that's the book I'm reading is finding the space to lead. And then uh, that's the one that I'm I'm only reading right now because I had to finish writing my own book. <laughs> Got gotcha. you. <laughs> I only, there's only so oh, many hours in the day. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. Well, I do want I do have a final question, but before I even ask you the final question, I want to give you a round of applause. <laughs> And I want to say to you, what are the best ways to get in contact with you in regards to the summit, in regards to your book, in regards to your brand on social media? Well, in uh, in social media, you could, uh, you know, go to my LinkedIn page um, under my name, Pam Borton. Um, I'm also, my website is probably the best, the best place to go find all of my information, and that's... Uh, um, PamBortonPartners.com, and um, you can uh, also connect directly with me. Um, actually, the Women on Point uh, website is WomenOnPointLeadership.com. Perfect. You get more information. Pam, you I want to email thank... me. You can email oh, me God. directly as well. Oh, perfect. Pam, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out tonight. I want to thank. Ms. Christy Hughes, who was able to patch the two of us together virtually. Um, if there's anything we can do in the future with working together, um, but when I do read your book, I want to actually have you come back so I can ask you even more questions about the book and just leadership, your leadership styles, and and also find out about the summit, how it how how things went. That'd be great. Well, thank you for having me tonight, and um, you asked me great questions. I thought you were extremely prepared, and you sounded like you already read the book, so (laughs) (laughs) So I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks so much, and look forward to having you come back in the next, I don't know, I'm going to say in the next month month to two months, I want to have you come back, because when I really dig down into the book, 
I'm really going to have some great questions for you. But, Pam, thanks so much for taking the time out. Yes, thank you. Have a great night. You too. And that was Miss Pam Borton who joined us um, to talk about – on point, her new upcoming book, On Point, A Coach's Game Plan for Life, Leadership, and Performing with Grace Under Fire, Leadership Skills, um, all of the above. Had a really great show tonight, five minutes past the hour. We had Dr. Michelle Reed join us, talk about e-prescriptions and health and wellness, and you just heard Ms. Pam Borton, a um, couple of minutes to go, wanted to read about read to you really quick, talk about um, the do's and don'ts of moving by our friends, Roadway Movers. It's about stress, stressing less. So according to recent studies, the 61% of people place moving homes at the top of the stress list ahead of relationship breakdowns, um, divorce, or even a new job. One way to ease the stress is to hire professionals that do all the heavy lifting, but still that still leaves the packing and organization of your affairs. You know, some some of the do's and don'ts of moving. Do all the packing and labeling before moving day. Don't forget to color code your boxes for each room. Do find free boxes at the grocery stores and online. Don't forget to hire a babysitter or a pet sitter. Do use packing materials you already have. Don't forget to pack an overnight bag to use on that first night. Do keep important documents with you. Don't place small objects directly in boxes. Do give specific tasks to any friends helping. Don't forget to plan out a floor plan before you move. I want to thank our good friends at Roadway Movers. We're definitely going to have those folks come through. Uh, Mr. Ross Sapir, the founder and CEO of Roadway Moving, um, he compiled some tips and tricks for us on uh, best practices with moving. So I think that's about it. That's the show. We're done. We're, I mean, we're, we're, we're closing off a little early Um, next week. The guest list is still totally unconfirmed. Um, I think we're going to have Ms. Rosalind Ross on a good friend to the room and uh, another person yet to be named we're, you know, storming through March. It's March Madness. I forgot to mention a March Madness question to Pam Borden. She would have appreciated it. But want to say thank you to you guys for listening, for joining us, for our guest. Um, I think we're done. I think we're done. And we're closing out with, I was going to say he got game because I haven't played that in a while. P.E. and Stephen Stills. Yeah, that's right. This cut goes out to all y'all that's been missing us for mad years. One love, yo. Yeah, that's right. He's got game. P.E. 19. Spring savings are in full bloom right now at Lowe's, where you'll find great deals on everything you need to get your home in shape for the season. So hurry into your neighborhood store today to save big on all of your spring home improvement needs, like a $100 Lowe's gift card with the purchase of in-stock Husqvarna riding lawnmowers. Make your home happy all season long with great brands and great prices right now at Lowe's. Offer valid 39 through 321. Excludes garden tractors and zero-turn radius mowers. Excludes repaired and reconditioned items. Selection varies by location, U.S. only.